disbelief in Allah and the messengers, the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures, to believe in destiny that good and bad both come from him and the resurrection. There is no God but Allah, the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures, to believe in destiny that good and bad both come from him and the resurrection there is no god but allah inna alhamdulillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyi'ati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlil fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluh. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to episode number 17 from the series Tawheed First. The subject, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will give you happiness in this world and Jannah in the hereafter. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Shaykh al-Islam says, Inna fi dunya la jannah. Indeed, in this world, in this life, there is a paradise. Man lam yadkhulha, lam yadkhul jannah al-akhirah. Whoever does not enter the jannah, he will not be able to enter the jannah in the hereafter. The paradise. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Shaykh al-Islam is talking about the jannah the paradise which you earn before, because of your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jannatul iman, Jannatul ta'ah, the paradise which you earn because of your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, another one from our righteous predecessors, they say, Wallahi, by Allah, inna lafi sa'ada. لو علم بها ملوك الأرض لجالدون عليها. We are enjoying the best of enjoyment. If the kings of those who possess this world would know about it, brothers and sisters in Islam, they will fight us for it. Dear viewers, it is important that you learn about the belief in Allah subhanahu wa taala, and if you do. It is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, In Allah yu'ti dunya li man yuhib wa man la yuhib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives this life, this dunya, the wealth, the health, the children, to those whom he loves and those whom he does not love. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants iman, faith in him. The hereafter, another warning, another wording, a deen, the religion, the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to only those whom he loves. In fairness, brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed inside each one of us, including non-Muslims, the belief in him. This is what is called the fitrah, the inclination, the instinct. Until inside, Islam inside, each one of us, each human being, in each human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed that fitrah, that belief. Uh, of course, in a general terms, dear viewers, the details of that belief has to be conveyed to you through messengers and prophets and books and revelations. And... A lot of us forgot about that fitrah because of the influence of the parents, because of the influence of the teacher, the influence of the society, the influence of the internet, the influence of music, the influence of shaitan. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam quoted uh, a hadith Qudsi, uh, a hadith that is uh, Allah spoken it, hadith Sahih Muslim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also 
created all of his servants on Tawheed. And then Satan's came and took them away from that Tawheed. That is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, we get inflected by calamities, by calamities, in order to be taken back to that fitrah, in order be, to be taken back. This explains why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inflects you. And this is how you understand hadith al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ عَبْدَ If Allah loves you, he will inflect you. He will test you by inflections. Because the veil which accumulated on the top of that fitrah, which is Islam, will be polished, will be removed. You will go back to the essence of that fitrah and possibly you will not forget. Possibly you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters in Islam, comprises four things. And we have a slide here for you. Faith in Allah means believing firmly in His existence, in His Lordship, in His names and attributes, and in His uluhiyyah, that you must single Him out with your worship. The belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very unfortunate. Even so, it's something that is placed inside the inclination, the fitra, the instinct of every human being. But the impact of uh, the nowadays trials and tribulations messed up that fitra. That instinct got scratched, is hammered. That is why you find atheists, people who deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that is undeniable. You cannot even deny it. That is why we are talking about evidence for that existence. But I want to warn you. I'm talking about the existence of a divine essence. Subhana. And no one knows the holiness, the greatness of that divine essence. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually, you're supposed to cut any hope that you could figure this out. And you're not supposed to make any figure of that divine essence in your head or an idol which represents it. We're not supposed to do that. And this is already being taught from previous revelations, dear viewers. Very important. So we're talking about divine essence. We're talking about a lordship. We're talking about that divine essence has names and attributes. So we have people who say that, yes, there is a divine essence, but, but without names and attributes. And we must believe that we must single him out with our action. Now, what are the evidence for the existence of that divine essence? The first of which we addressed and we covered in the previous episode, which is the fitrah. We talked about it. Uh, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fashioned all of us Muslims. Um, subhanallah, this is contradictory uh, or conflicting, uh, not conflicting in the sense, but this is the opposite of the belief of a Christian. That children born sinners, uh, uh, sinners. Uh, we believe in the original forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meanwhile, Christians who claim mercy and so forth, they believe in the original sin, the doctrine of the original sin. But we as Muslims, we believe in the doctrine of original forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dear viewers, the second evidence that we can use in order to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the intellect. And yes, al-aql, reasoning, uh, healthy reasoning. And uh, by the way, dear viewers, Allah, you see, I want to settle something here. You can use your intellect in Islam being commanded by the divine to see the evidence for the unseen to exist. I will uh, tell you the story of a companion whose name is Jubair ibn Mut'im ibn Adi. He shares with us the first time Islam touched his heart. And he was not a Muslim. 
uh, I have to take you back to the story when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the neighboring town of Ta'if to call people to Islam and they chased him out. When the, uh, after the death of his uncle, of course, he lost his protection in Mecca. When he arrived Mecca, he could not enter without protection. So he sent for Al-Mut'im ibn Adi, the father of Jubayr, to offer him that protection. He was one of the leaders of the tribes in Mecca. And Al-Mut'im did offer him that protection in spite of being a non-Muslim. When the Muslims imprisoned uh, so many of the disbelievers after the battle of Badr, Jubayr, who was not a Muslim, remembered the favor which his father did for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he knew the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will not deny. And even Al-Mut'im, Rasul made a statement, if Al-Mut'im is alive, I would have given him these uh, uh, 70 prisoners or these prisoners. Um, so Jubair went to Medina in order to, uh, subhanallah, uh, intercede to free the prisoners, the disbelievers uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu So he arrived at Maghrib time when everybody in the masjid and the Rasul Sallallahu is leading the Salah and he is reciting Surah at tur and he got into these verses Ya Ikhwa out of this world Am khuliqu min ghayri shay'in am humul khaliqun أَمْ خَلَقُوا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بَلْ لَا يُوقِنُونَ Questions that hammer the heart. Were they created out of nothing? Or did they create themselves? Did they, did they create the heavens and the earth? Indeed, they are in trouble. Dear viewers, this non-Muslim at the time said regarding hearing this because he reflected upon these words and it got down to his heart and he said, كَادَ قَلْبِي أَنْ يَطِيرُ My heart was about to fly out of my chest because I reflected upon that. Who created that universe? Using intellect, who? You will come out with one conclusion that the Creator is more perfect than the created. The creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the second reason we use to prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Talk more of these, talk about more of these evidence which establish the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't go away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. His belief in Allah and the messengers, the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures. His belief in Allah and the messengers, the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear viewers, welcome back. Tawheed first. Very important, dear viewers, that you learn to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Learn, لا إله إلا الله. Believe in Allah comprises four things. You believe that Allah exists, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we're talking about a divine essence, not a spirit, like some Muslims believe. When you ask them, what is Allah? They tell you Allah is everywhere. They turn Allah into a spirit. Believe in the divine essence of Allah and no one can figure out the greatness of that divine essence but it's so great it fits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala you must believe in the lordship of Allah he is the lord the one who created everything the one who takes care of it the one who sustains it the one who provides it for it the one who gives it the life the one who gives it the guidance and you must also believe that divine essence has names and attributes. We have Muslims who believe in the existence of a divine essence, but strip that divine essence from the names and the attributes. Dangerous. And this is actually what led those who think or believe that Allah is a, a spirit to believe that. You see, when you strip out 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the attribute of highness, sifat al Because when you ask uh, the, the overwhelming majority of Muslims now, where is Allah? They tell you Allah is everywhere. That is wrong. You're turning Allah into a spirit. Uh, but what led them to do this? Those who stripped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani I'm sorry I'm, I'm using that language, but those who rejected, I shouldn't say that, they rejected the names and the attributes, especially the name of Allah al-A'la. Sabbi hisma rabbika al-A'la. So Allah is on the throne, on the seventh heaven, above his throne. This is the answer. But he is with us, he, he, with his uh, uh, knowledge, he sees us, he hears us, he knows what we're doing, he knows what we're thinking about. So important, uh, the point that I'm trying to make here, that those who rejected the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, led those to believe that Allah is everywhere, Allah is a spirit, which is wrong. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator, is the provider, is the one who takes care of you, is the one who provides for you, he is the one who possessed the beautiful names, the perfect attributes, why do you go and worship somebody else? Come on, reason that. You should single him out with your actions. Brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, we are covering the belief in Allah and we want to provide evidence. Uh, we mentioned five of them uh, and it's very unfortunate that we need to do that because there are people who deny Allah is the creation, deny Allah being the creator, deny even the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned the fitrah, we mentioned also the intellect, the reasoning and, and subhanallah, uh, you see, one way to find out about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is by looking into the universe around you. Uh, and that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites us to do this. Uh, this is the law of traveling and reflecting upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the disbelievers in Mecca who denied Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَالِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ Why don't they look at how the camel were created? The camel is the, uh, the boat or the ship of the desert. The camel for the Arabs is like the 7-7 uh, uh, Boeing, whatever it is now. So uh, look how the camels were created. Who did this? Huh? Uh, uh, what about earth? How it is even for you? What about the mountains? How it's put together? What about the heavens? How it is raised? أَفَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا إِلَى السَّمَاءِ فَوْقَهُمْ كَيْفَ بَنَيْنَاهَا وَزَيَّنَّاهَا وَمَا لَهَا مِنْ فُرُوجٍ Why don't they look at the heaven, the sky above them? How we decorated it for them? And there is no holes in it. وَالْأَرْضَ مَدَدْنَاهَا And earth, we expanded it for them. So the Quran invites you to look and reflect upon the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This will indeed, if you reason, if you're smart, you will say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. Because that creation must have a, crea a creator and the creator is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani look at a Bedouin, somebody who doesn't have a PhD, somebody who doesn't have even education. How did you figure out that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. You know what he said? Al-ba'rah tadullu ala al-ba'ir wa sayr yadullu ala al-masir. If you see a dung of a camel, that means a camel was here. And if you see the print of foot on earth, that means somebody was walking here. Sama'un datu abraj wa ard datu fijaj wa biharun datu amwaj. Look at the heaven and the stars in it. Look at the earth with the valleys and the walkways in it. Look at the sea where there is uh, waves like mountains. This doesn't 
indicate a creator. And this is what is meant by intellect. The third, uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, is the divine revelation. SubhanAllah, this is a very important piece as well. Somebody who's messed up, and a lot of Muslims are like this, messed up, drinking, smoking, uh, doing drugs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pours faith in his heart. And he begins implementing the divine revelation in his life. He begins praying. He begins fasting. He's thriving. He could turn into a scholar. Why? The sharia, ah, the medicine, the divine revelation. Mahua, you need to understand something. The divine revelation is the curriculum that you're supposed to implement in your lives in order to function like the rest of the elements of the universe which are in a state of submission already. You see, uh, the sun, the moon, the sky, everybody, all of these elements are أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَسْجُدُ لَهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ وَالنُّجُومُ وَالشَّجَرُ وَالدَّوَابِ والشمس والقمر والنجوم والجبال والشجر والدواب. All Allah subhanahu wa taala in that verse is saying all these creations of Allah are in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Now why? Because they follow the curriculum. Because they are in a state of submission. You see, the Quran, the Sunnah, is what will help you to function like these elements. And that is why, read at the beginning of Surah Al-Rahman. Look at this. Ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Allam al-Qur'an. He created, uh, Ar-Rahman, he created mankind. It's supposed to be that. But Ar-Rahman revealed the curriculum, the manhaj for mankind. Ar-Rahman, Allam al-Qur'an, khalaq al-insan. عَلَّمَهُ الْبَيَانِ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ بِحُسْبَانِ وَالنَّجْمُ وَالشَّجَرُ يَسْجُدَانِ وَالسَّمَاءَ رَفَعَهَا وَوَضَعَ الْمِيزَانِ أَلَّا تَطْغَوْ فِي الْمِيزَانِ The overall meanings of these verses that Allah created you and he also brought, brought down the curriculum for you. That if you implement, that is what is meant by the divine revelation. If you implement in your lives, you will function like the sun. You will function like the moon. You will function like every single thing, dear viewers. By Allah, do you ever hear that the sun is not going to rise today? The sun doesn't feel like rising today. The moon doesn't, because it follows uh, a specific uh, uh, curriculum, because it is in a state of submission. Uh, that is why we say that, subhanAllah, uh, imagine somebody is walking against the current. Imagine there's a big crowd, uh, uh, like you, you, you're doing tawaf around the Kaaba. You're supposed to have the, the Kaaba to your left side. Somebody's going against that. It's exactly anybody who rejects Allah, disbelieves in Allah, he's going against the current of the creation. And that is why when you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you rhyme with the universe. All of them are in a state of submission. You're rhyming to, you're, you're part of that uh, rhyme, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, supplications. Come on, you made dua at one stage and Allah answered that dua. He delivered, he delivered what you asked. Come on, he delivered, you know it. You know it, dear viewers. And we have the miracles of the messengers that uh, you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about. The stick of Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala split the moon for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the disbelievers requested uh, that from him. Dear viewers, with this we have uh, covered the first uh, element of believing Allah uh, in subhanahu wa ta'ala which is believing the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, inshallah the next episode uh, we want to talk about the belief in the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you must believe that Allah is the Lord you must single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his actions don't miss the next episode uh, because this is an important subject assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh is belief in Allah and the messengers, the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures. To believe in destiny that 
good and bad both come from him and the resurrection there is no god but allah the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures to believe in destiny that good and bad both come from him and the resurrection there is no god but belief in allah and the messengers the angels and the final day and the holy scriptures to believe in destiny that good and bad both come from him and the resurrection there